Oh my god, that movie was awesome. I'll say, that monkey was all like, bruh, and that lizard was all like, rawr. That big robo thing was all like, <laughs> What did you think, Lubot? Yes, watching my ex-boyfriend get decapitated by a monkey is rather entertaining. Ex-boyfriend? Huh? You went out with Mecha Godzilla? No, I just lied to you and I'm not really sure why. Who the fuck? Lucy, I think we're being robbed. What the fuck are you talking about? Spritzy! What? Ugh. Fine, I'm sorry I racially profiled the femboy. I actually thought it was funny. Nobody cares what you thought. Shut up, faggot. This house is infested with idiots. Watch it. Anyways, we've just gotten back from watching Godzilla vs. Kong. Oh, you saw it too? Yeah, it was fucking awesome. Who are you rooting for? Heh <laughs> I bet Wado was rooting for- Lubot, hold your gun against Spritzy's head to keep her quiet. Why would I do that? I'll give you a hundred dollars. What's with your horse? I don't know, something about Equestria and Nazis. Wait, really? Well, yeah. Celestia wasn't really a fan of, well, Jewish ponies. Jewish ponies. You have Jewish ponies. Oh, yeah, well, head. Turns out Celestia didn't take too kindly to the whole celebrating Hanukkah instead of heart swarming thing. Huh. Anyways, yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, well, let's go over it. Well, the movie starts off with Kong just kind of bumming around on Skull Island. He takes a shower, scratches his ash, and reaches the Truman Show dome. You know, keeping the monkey trapped in a billion dollar dome with legs to simulate a sky seems like a lot of effort for nothing. This kinda reminds me of that one time Apple Bloom and her friends got trapped on an island after a plane crash. They eventually got rescued, but that fat kid Snips died. That sounds like Lord of the Flies. That's because it is Lord of the Flies. Yeah, that's the title of Apple Bloom's autobiography. After breaching the dome and revealing that Kong can't maintain living in this habitat for much longer, we're introduced to two more characters, Deffy Mixed Stupid Head and Woman. We then cut to Madison, who was the daughter of the bitch that died in the last movie because Ghidorah was all like... <laughs> I think that's how that happened. What was that how that happened? I don't ever pay attention to the humans in these movies. I just like watching them cry because their homes are destroyed while the big monsters punch each other. Hmm. She's very lethargic, isn't she? Don't worry, she's gonna short circuit herself the moment we talk about Mecha Godzilla. So Godzilla gets really angry because COVID canceled the Femboy convention. He throws a hissy fit, forces an Apex Cybernetics lab, and not really anything else. While we're there, we're introduced to Mr. Podcast, who discovers what appears to be one of Mechagodzilla's eyes, wasted up on a platform in a large room. After confronting her dad about how Godzilla isn't a bad guy, he tells her that he is being a bad guy, so she does what any rational teenager would do. Have her not boyfriend, fat nerdy friend, steal his brother's van, so they can go find Mr. Podcast because she thinks he's telling the truth. Humans in this movie are written like cardboard. Who gives a shit? We went to watch it for monsters hitting each other, and we got monsters hitting each other. It made me horny, and I liked it. I don't think you've ever been horny once in your entire life. I sure as fuck was during the final battle. Everything technology-based in this movie made my circuits ticklish. After meeting up with them, they go below the destroyed Apex facility and discover a sort of loading bay, which is actually a super monorail that launches them through a tunnel all the way to fucking Hong Kong. See, this is exactly what I was talking about. I thought that was kinda stupid. You're stupid, and if you insult tech again, I will push you into oncoming traffic. During this time, Mr. Big Bad and Sushi Man meet up with Scruff to talk about his book. Turns out his brother went splat after entering the Hollow Earth, but Apex has tech that makes you not go splat. So he agrees to head the mission into the Hollow Earth. After doing that, he convinces Woman and Deffy to transport Kong out of the Arctic in order to enter the Hollow Earth. While transporting Kong, Death Baldor waddles outside in the rain on the freighter with the massive monkey just kind of wiggling around out there. What? 
Uh, no, that joke doesn't work. Was it a deaf joke? Yeah, something about getting hit by a bus, but they're out in the middle of the ocean. How can she tell the difference? Because she's deaf, not blind, you moron. Godzilla has a little roid rage and takes it out on Kong. We get some cool scenes underwater, and some solid brutal hits landed on each one of them. However, this first round ends up going to Godzilla as Kong almost drowns. So they cut the power and play dead, so Godzilla will go away. Godzilla leaves, and they decide to get a bunch of Chinooks to hook Kong out of the Arctic. The walking exposition machine tells Kong that the entrance to the Hollow Earth is home. He doesn't want to go in, but when she says his family could be in there, like an Alabama boy chasing after his sister, he charges in with unkempt sexual ferocity. Hey, just cause white trash is incestuous doesn't mean I am. No one said anything to you. Uh, uh, oh. They take the anti-splatmobiles down to the Hollow Earth with Kong, and run around a Stranger Things looking ass playground for a while. God, the Hollow Earth looks like Amy Schumer's ass. It's jagged on both sides and full of hideous creatures trying to eat you. Why, why do you know that? It's just a scientific hypothesis. Nothing about anything you do ever is even remotely scientific in any way. I mean, I once tested a hypothesis when I was a kid. I smacked another fall upside the head with a frying pan to see if it stopped making noise. Well, did he? Well, yeah, but I, I got detention. A meeting of the minds. Meeting of the minds? More like Mega Mind. <laughs> but yeah, Godzilla totally big brains it here. When Kong puts the axe in the diddly hole, it glows. Godzilla feels it and does the most chad thing ever. Go down the stairs and give Kong a stern talking to? No, he blows a hole through the planet because he can. Metal. But doesn't metal make you horny? Wrong kind of metal. Oh, I get it. Like, ACDC. Also, the wrong kind of metal. Where do you find people this stupid to hang out with? Do you have weekly meetings to discuss how your negatively intelligent brains are so dense that a forklift couldn't crack them? No! Last week's meeting was about putting bananas on stairs. Oh my god. Kong Oogaboogas up the hole and finally him and Godzilla prepare to battle. Godzilla smacks his weenie around and Kong slaps his titties a few times. After a few blows are delivered, Kong wins round two and perches himself up on a building. But as everyone with a brain kind of figured out, the final round, Kong got his shit rocked and was essentially left for dead. Now shut up. I'm doing this part. Um, why? Because cool shit actually happens in this last part. Mecha Godzilla, he tears through the mountain, and then for a solid few minutes makes Godzilla look like a sissy in the high school boy's bathroom. Submissive and on his knees. I never did that. Cause you're not a boy. And even when you thought you were, you weren't gay. Kong then gets his heart restarted because Elon Musk torches a Tesla on his tits. That part didn't make much sense. And the rest of this movie did? Makes about as much sense as you make another countryism. See what happens. Mecha Godzilla continues to pound Godzilla harder than Chris Brown beats his wife. And wouldn't you know it? Kong gets his fat ass up and saves Godzilla's skin. Then the final showdown ensues, which I wish was longer, but was still cool. And it ends with a decapitation. Kong just tears through Mecha Godzilla like butter with his newly charged axe, courtesy of Godzilla. Gosh, if theaters weren't closed for the night, I'd go see it again. I'd go see it again just to see Mecha Godzilla once more. What a sexy beast he is. Is Lubot horny? I'm not sure. Her default emotions are anger and disappointment, so I've never seen her act this way. This is a weird house with weird people and weird stuff. I, I especially don't like that horse. Why? And you're trying to tell me you yourself don't have a talking horse and a robot sitting at your house? Okay, I'm 90% sure I don't have either. 90 isn't 100. Overall though, this movie was phenomenal. If you haven't seen it, go to theaters to see it right now. Support this movie. Yeah, if they don't think we want more, they won't make more. The director himself even said he's leaving it up to the audience to decide if they want more movies. So fuck yeah. Hashtag continue the monsterverse. Patron time. Thank you to Akami San 99, The Aggie Boy, Three Branch, Nathan Pride, Gall, Adora Shadow, Blunk, Soviet Absol, Calvary, Garbage Disposal, Carrion Blossom, MID Productions, Time Lord Rick, Small Mellow, and Alex L. Thanks to patrons and members like these, we're able to keep the show coming at a weekly rate and continually add new things to it. If you'd like to support us, please consider becoming a channel member or a patron. 